It's Christmas time. <laughs> It's Merry Christmas time, and also Idle Thumbs 138. I'm Chris Remo. I'm Jake Rodkin. Merry Christmas. I'm Sean Vanneman. For those of you who don't give a fuck that it's Christmas, it is just Idle Thumbs 137. And, oh, 137. And also, Shit, I it. did I fuck it up? You said 137, and it's December 25th, 2013. It's 138. 138 for Christmas. Mm-hmm. One three eight. It's appropriate Christmas. that it's one thirty eight because we are releasing this on Christmas Day. Yeah, yeah. As everyone knows, that's uh-huh. we are celebrating the hundred thirty eighth dishonored Christmas. Recording this today. <laughs> yeah, dishonored oh. Jesus was born one hundred thirty eight years, years ago. ago. He's actually he actually just died three years ago. He lived a very long <laughs> life <laughs> in dishonored world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, dishonored Jesus just well, he made died. It. He died dishonored three years ago. His yeah. real age is a little complicated. Which is actually right. 20 years from now. Depends on what calendar yeah. you're going on. So Dishonored Easter does not But he, like, he, I, I think it's worth saying that Dishonored Jesus lives a long and prosperous life and is never persecuted. Yeah. Yeah. Does a lot of, like, fine deeds. Dishonored Easter mm-hmm. is actually a YouTube video of a kid opening a Nintendo 64. It's not a holiday. It's fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's very confusing. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is probably a so podcast. Mar- marry that. Marry that. Marry this. This is probably Mary. not a full episode of, mm, of Idle Thumbs. It's probably a blast. It's the dome. We're going to open our first to gift, the Christmas though, I think. Dome. We should just j- oh. skip right to the first gift that we received. Which <clears throat> How many is, gifts are there? This is like the 12 days of Christmas as, in one day. As far as we know, they're, they're up to it, including one gift, but there might be more gifts. Listen on, dear reader. We know that we received one gift, though, because Captain Invictus... Invictus yes. wrote us with the third chapter of the Hat Baron saga. Our so. first gift is hats. Captain Invictus writes, me again. Yes, <laughs> Hat Barons is a definite thing, likely for the reasons Jake gave. Is that a response to something? Oh, because last week we were talking about how Hat Barons itself sounds like a name oh, out, of, right. out of like TF2 lore. Yeah, right, 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 right. Oh, um, so, they, so he's they confirming name, that Hat Barons is not just a the community uses, uses an on brand yeah. yeah. moniker for the people who do this phrase. in real life. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good, good. That's very nice. Good. All right, well, that's already a gift. Did you see that? Sorry, no. Go ahead. The, oh, you fucking you son of a bitch! You were in the same airspace as the opening of a steam box that looked like it came oh, in a yeah. fucking Manco crate. That thing was awesome. I know. Yeah, it was really cool. It was the sweetest packaging for any console I've seen ever. Are they all going to come in that cool crate? I have no idea. I bet it was not. a it was a sweet. Like, <laughs> they are not. <laughs> it was pretty awesome because it. The funny thing about it, it came in a in a wooden crate, and it's the kind of crate that in the past. Things would just be shipped in. That right. now looks like so much a novel, so much of a novelty that you imagine. Oh, that must have come inside another cardboard box because it's like a, it's like Did someone it had to. No, it was just that they just shipped a sick ass looking uh, wooden, wooden crate, crate, but it awesome. just messes with your expectations of like the modern world. Right when it was sitting there, the everybody was like, "Hey, where's the box? This came in piece of shit." Yeah, yeah, yeah you're exactly. like, "Where's the box? Yeah. This box right. came in." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's, they just put this in the mail. It's right better than a car. But where's the garbage thing, that it was yeah. wrapped in? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Where's the thing that's gonna fucking choke a dolphin? Right. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's a really nice box. I don't Tim, think dolphins. Tim was saying he's just gonna keep it at his house and use it for things. Because why not? Make a tiny little bed for his daughter. She's small. She is. She's adorable. Um, <laughs> Tim's daughter is like one of the nicest behaved children you'll ever meet. She's like really sweet and smart and nice. It's kind of amazing. Uh, maybe good, she's good like, job, maybe they Tim. have, maybe they're like, they like zapper or something. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe, know. probably. Um, but no, the steam box seems really cool. The, the one that we were sent anyway, at double fun. It was, uh, yeah. it's nice. It's, it's, did you play the broken age on it? Yeah, it works super well. The funny thing I've noticed people give it a lot of shit because it looks not, not, people i encountered but like people on the internet <laughs> i've been giving a lot of shit for like looking like a computer it was just a computer with like an operating system that's made for it oh like, that's just like what everything every is single <laughs> device in the world also is the ps3 now. and xbox one look like that too this look they like are black that. boxes that yeah, are they are vaguely exactly intel based that. that run an operating system yeah it's weird like i don't really know what makes this any different like it's weird uh, does it go me- whoop and like let you <laughs> make a face out of parts because if not it's just a computer Make a face out of like parts. a little cartoon guy that jumps oh, around, like an avatar of yeah. some kind. I mean, it starts up with a. I thought you were talking about like, that f- that face molding game at the beginning of Super Mario sixty four. Does it let you stretch Mario's <laughs> face around? If so, <laughs> it's not a computer. Yeah, it it starts up the way a, co- a modern console starts up, which T- is tell that us it had what a spoilers. I don't want to know. It's whatever. It's it starts up and there's like 
a sound designy sound. What's it sound like? And like, like I don't fucking come on. The, the big picture does that too, though. It yeah, has yeah. Like it wacky looks, it looks different, but it's but yeah, it's a similar thing. And then it just the first thing you see when you start it up is like Game. set your system time. Like oh. I mean, all the shit that now actually really happens when you start up a console. You know what I mean? Where it's like, sounds like a computer, computer to me. What's your wireless or network? an iPad? Like just all the shit that already happens. Yeah, exactly. Any 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 modern connected con- device. device. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, my Nest. And you get into it's it, and nest. it's a nice. It's a nice interface. It's I mean, it's cool. Merry I don't Christmas. Know. It's a cool thing. I'm. G- I'm. <laughs> Spirit of giving, Jake. What? Nothing. Yeah. Talk about thermostats. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> but I feel like I'm probably going to buy one of the lower end ones just for the like oh. streaming. Oh, did you guys? Stuff? Were you able to try any of the streaming stuff? No, I don't think it's in yet. They're still in okay. the like right now. I think. But yeah, that's the sort of the thing the, that's really exciting to me is my yeah. PC can do its mm-hmm. thing and I can just g- get it. Mm-hmm. Goofy and terrible confession on the streaming stuff is that I've been playing uh, Mario Three D World on the Wii U. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I actually did the thing where <clears throat> my girlfriend was watching TV and I was playing Mario on the stupid handset without having the TV on at all. Uh huh. It was really nice. And then I was like, God, I wish other consoles could do. <gasps> Someone could make a Steam box that is just a right. controller with a screen in it. That would be Actually, terrible, but the, I f- want that now. The Nvidia Shield already does that. It does mirroring off your PC. Yeah. Oh, I don't want to buy a Shield. Yeah, I'm just saying it does. But yeah, I know. I mean, I, interesting. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, someone could totally make a. It's that's what's weird about the. That's what's cool about the Steam box spec is it's just. Yeah, anyone could make anything with like it. Really, the notion. Of, I guess. The, I guess the shield already does it. But yeah, the idea of just being able to play a PC game, or rather, a console port on PC on my Steam library in bed on a stupid screen with some controls, or like uh-huh. on the couch without having to use the TV, is a completely is an yep. experience I wasn't thinking about mm-hmm. until I was playing the Mario like that. The Mario. It was interesting. Mm-hmm. You're playing mm-hmm. the Mario. Yeah. Playing the Mario. Yeah, I was doing the Mario. I conflated Steam the app with Steam OS for one second, and then I, I could got... totally browse the Steam store. You also probably could do. No, that. yeah, I was thinking <laughs> something else though. Oh. Yeah, yeah. It'd be cool if you got to a point where you could just have a Mac laptop that was on your network and let your PC do all the things. You could do that too, probably. I mean, if Steam can. I was conflated. Well, the thing is, is Steam OS is running on Linux. Right, but your Steam client is supposed to. Oh, the way they talk about that is the other way around. They talk exactly. about exactly how, how Steam OS can stream stuff off of your desktop Steam client, but I imagine that that has to just at some point turn into any Steam client in your on your LAN can stream content off of another Steam client. I would hope so. It would be weird to not do that. Yeah. I'm yeah. going like, to actually briefly recap this feature because I've noticed a lot of people are, don't know what it is. Like I've seen a lot of pe- their confusion about it. So what this actually... This is Christmas knowledge. Yeah. Gather around, children. <laughs> That's my gift to you. The re- We're all dropping our toys and coming over to Uncle Remo. He's going to tell us about... Weird. I don't know. I I want this entire episode to be imagined in the minds of the readers as us in pajamas having just opened all our presents. Sure. Okay. Well, we're still, we're still, we haven't even opened our first one yet. I know. We, we tore a bow off and then, and they're like, wait, and then we got really really attracted with the bow. We started throwing it around. Yeah, yeah, exactly. (laughs) Um, yeah. So the, the SteamOS streaming thing is that you will over your local area network, whether it's, you know, wired or Wi Fi or whatever, uh, wireless, um, on your Steam box, your you know your your dedicated machine with Steam OS, you'll be able to uh, play games that are actually being rendered in real time on a different computer in your house running Steam games. So if you have a if like you have a Windows or presumably Mac PC somewhere else in your home, um, you can be playing games on it from a different room on a different screen using your Steam box. And so, which is important because that computer could be so much more powerful than exactly right. The box. And, right. Yeah. And it doesn't. It's you know clear, presumably not going to have the issues that things like Gaikai or, or OnLive do because you're just streaming it over your local area network, which is super right. fast. So assuming you have decent Wi-Fi, you should be okay. Yeah, which I think most people do at this point. Um, uh, and especially if it's wired. Most people who will be investing in Steambox hardware probably yeah. have decent Wi-Fi. Yeah, but, but I mean, how fast is or even a regular, even like older Wi-Fi, right? It's like it's got to be pretty decent. Yeah, it gets janky after a few years into the past. But sure, yeah. yeah. Um, but in any case, it's cool. And that's one it's of the also a those... cheap upgrade if you have a shitty home network. Yeah. Um, it's sometimes you have to burn some calories, but so that's one of the reasons I was saying uh, my plan is probably like I already have a f- pretty powerful just Windows PC in my bedroom, um, so I'm planning on, I'll probably just buy one of the cheapest Steam boxes offered just so that I have just a simple device that can just stream stuff from my main PC and it doesn't really need to do any of the like 3D like you know high impact 3D rendering it's on its own um, it just seems like a nice convenient thing to have uh, there's going to be a time where you're going to be like sick or something at home and 
you're gonna like, well, I should just play some video games. Like, that made me feel really bad. Feel better. And you grab the controller and you turn it on, and you realize that your your bedroom PC is off. And you're just like, fuck, it's back to Zuma. <laughs> and it's just the Zuma is gonna come back. That's the only thing local on yeah. that one shitty And it can be yeah. run like off of its like yeah, yeah. yeah. hundred dollar graphics card that it's in right. there because he bought the lowest end one. So right. it's just the mania returns. Yeah. Call I'm predicting it now. I've tried to go back to Zuma a few times, but ever since I actually like finally beat it for real, like the entirety of it, it's nothing. 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 It's weird. It's too bad. That kind of makes me sad. I know. Isn't it strange? It really upsets me a little bit. For a game that I enjoyed for like years off and on, I just have no... I kind of fell out of love with it. Yeah. It happens, man. People grow apart. That's true. Oh, man. Until I mean, like, Zuma frog. 3 comes out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. If they make a new Zuma. I mean, Peggle 2 has just appeared, so who's to say what's yeah. next? I'm yeah. They're actually going... Ever. So if it's Zuma, Peggle, Plants vs. Zombies, they're doing it in they're reverse. Doing it backwards, yeah. So Plants vs. Zombies 2... Peggle, Peggle 2, two Zuma, Zuma 3, whatever. Three, Zuma I guess. 8. I don't think they ever numbered the Zuma. No, they just fine. kept putting Zuma, adjectives on the end of them. So it's yeah. going to be Zuma 2. Mm-hmm. Or Zuma best. You guys should break out should, the you, best. Yeah, you guys should really name things more. Are you talking to PopCap? Me? Yeah. What do you mean, professional? Who are you saying you guys? You guys. I mean, you're so good with this. Who are we? What are you, you talking too, about? You too. Zuma best? Well, that's a great name. I would say it's one of the best names. It's probably the best name. Yeah. 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 We should read this guy's email. Oh, let's open our gift. Sorry. Uh, Okay, so Captain Invictus continues. If you really want to see how ridiculously lucrative the key thing is, go to the Steam Marketplace and check out the graph for Manco crate key sales under the lifetime span. Pretty much every single day since the Marketplace began, at least 10,000 keys sell per day. Valve is the only source of these keys. So when they get put on the Marketplace, Valve takes a 15% cut. But whereas usually the sale of, it- sale of items and cards would be split between Valve and the creators of the game the items are for, when it comes to Dota, Counter-Strike Go, and TF2, Valve takes the full cut for themselves. For each key that sells for $2.30 on the marketplace, Valve gets $0.30 cents of that, or rather $0.30 cents worth of Steam Bucks simply vanishes, creating a healthy drain on the economy to prevent a glut of Steam Bucks with no outlet. Their economist is a pretty smart and or di- diabolical dude. But these are s- keys. The only way to get these keys is to buy them from the but legitimate then people can marketplace. Trade them to each other. I know, but people are buying them from the legitimate marketplace and then selling them also on the s- on the yeah. between each other marketplace. So they're del- Steam is double dipping. Yeah, two fifty plus the thirty is two eighty. Yeah. What the fuck? It's like in California when you sell a used car, you have to pay tax on it. Yeah. Which still enrages my parents. <laughs> oh. As somebody who's bought a lot, as somebody who has bought and sold a lot of used vehicles in California over the past few years, yeah, it's the fucking worst. Yeah. Trying to like talk to a stranger, like trying to get look a stranger in the eye and be like, "What if you say we bought this for two grand?" And he's like, "I don't know if I really feel comfortable lying on these forms." Like, oh come on, they never check. It's gonna be on me when I go to the DMV anyway. You're just telling a stranger to lie to save money. It sucks. Yep. Not that I've ever done that. It probably sucks. <laughs> it seems like it would. Um, so he says, after I sent the first email to you guys, I got in touch with Rob, the Darth Vader of hat trading, on yet another new account of his since he's abandoned his original one. He has since moved on from Steam stuff to the wonderful world of cryptocurrencies. Yes, he's a Bitcoin and Litecoin dealer. Oh, he must have been <laughs> fucking Litecoin. just out beside himself two days ago. Oh, and China fucking cracked down? Yeah, and cut yeah. The, yeah, the price of Bitcoin went down by 50% yeah. in minutes. Yep. That's happened a couple times with Bitcoins. It's crazy every time. <laughs> I've never even heard of Litecoins. I guess that's probably a new fucking even crazier thing. Yeah. Um, apparently, he makes far more off that than he did with hats, thanks to his system that automatically scans for cheap prices and automatically sells them when they're higher. Since we last spoke, he handled some even larger bundles of super valuable hats and even began <laughs> handling the illicit money of the account hijackers he worked alongside, especially his most common customer, a man who knows goes by the moniker Wrong. Wrong asked him to temporarily hold on to his recent spoils, $10,000 to be exact. Rob made the observation that, hey, he's sick and tired of the hat economy and he was planning on getting out anyway, so he decided that this $10,000 was a fitting severance package from the trading game. After all, who's the account hijacker going to complain to? So Rob went off into the sunset with a suitcase full of money to sell bitcoins and shit. When I picture him heading south in his own car at the top down, it always makes me laugh. Robert Dufresne, who crawled through a river of hats, came out clean on the other side. Robert Dufresne headed for the Pacific. I'll cut it off here to give some other folks some email time, but here's a here's not a, necessary. Here's, here's a picture of that donkey balloon with a scale picture from the Nerdy Stuff website. 
before they took down the page, which is just wonderful. Um, and then he, oh my God, he has a he has a, an image of one of the okay. So that's balloons. an insane looking donkey. But yeah, the, yeah, I've seen these donkey balloons. Is yeah, the scale picture there? Um, let's open it up and see. <laughs> yes, it is. So it's half the size of a human. Yeah. It's oh pretty, yeah. So we need five hundred of those. <laughs> <laughs> that guy could probably hook us they up show with 500 documents. He said, no, he has them. Remember? Yeah, 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 let's offload them. Uh, I've also got hundreds of Dota hoodies and T-shirts, two dozen Dota gaming headsets that I bought not for the physical goods, but the little item cards they come with. Dude, fucking email me. <laughs> we'll talk. <laughs> I thought you were getting out of hoodies. I'll cut the hoods off. T-shirts. <laughs> headsets. Headsets I could uh, use. I'll take them all. Um, I would totally buy a headset. It's no longer super profitable like it used to be now that all the genuines you can get are craftable. If you want to talk about winged donkey balloon business, you've got my email. There it is. All right, guys. I think we could think. I think we could figure something out. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna. I'm gonna stew on that over the break. Not the podcast break because there is not a podcast break this week. I mean the break, right. the Christmas, the Christmas break, the Christmas break, the one you're on as as right this episode now. is being. This is going into people's. Ears. I really like all. Of, I like both of your tasteful chosen jammies for this podcast. By the way, oh, yeah. thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Thought some 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 stripes were fitting. Yeah, stripes. I made sure to get the kind Vertical that has stripes. the two buttons on the butt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I've left it and open, a, as and, you can see. <laughs> and a Goku. Yes. Just on the on the left side. On the screen. I managed to find the silk Goku pajamas that also have the old timey butt flap. <laughs> <laughs> it was custom made. Jake, I had please. someone on Etsy. Make I was gonna say these me. are bespoke. <laughs> oh man, wait, sorry. This is my gift to myself after yeah. last year. I know those Camposanto pillows are really nice, but what I really wanted Anna the Red to do <laughs> was make, make me a Goku onesie with butt flap. I wasn't going to read this email because it's not really about anything, but now I'm going to read it because of what you just said. <laughs> Whoa, okay. Cody N. writes, hey, Thumbs, I've been listening to a ton of old Idle Thumbs lately, and I realized when writing a paper for school that the voice Chris uses when he reads reader mail has seeped in my brain to the point that it has become the voice in my head. As I proofread my final paper, all I hear is Chris reading it on the podcast, and I've definitely become a better writer since I know Lord Chris Remo is watching. Also, every time Sean says bespoke, I want to punch myself in the face. Still love him, though. That is all, Cody. Well, Merry fucking Christmas. <laughs> Bespoke. I hope your face looks good. <laughs> That's your gift after that punch. <laughs> gift two. <laughs> yeah. Um let's see. Um, 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 um. Sean Wenham writes, reincarnated Mario. Hey thumbs, Jumpman became Mario as a result of pixel limitations. I thought Jake was going to bring this up last week when talking about early pixel Mario, but Miyamoto gave, Jump, gave Jumpman dungarees so his pixel arms would be a differentiating color than his pixel body, and gave him a mustache as it was a better way to convey a face in pixels than a mouth. Somewhere between Donkey Kong and Mario, he contrived the conceit of a man with dungarees and a mustache could only logically be an Italian plumber. This is where the character of Mario came from. From Mario to Gone Home, technical and budget limitations have shaped the conceit of the final game. Is this a good thing compared to the relative freedom of premise that other mediums enjoy? Cheers, Sean Wenham. I don't think they do, other than like novels. Hmm? Like I don't think other mediums have like some freedom of. Like, I, it's think, like, I think movies do now, especially with CG. They can be pretty movies are so fuck. fucking expensive to make. Yeah, but movies are still make so much more minute by shit. minute expensive to make than games. Like just per minute in production, minute by minute. But I would say an average like successful film probably. I mean. Yeah. Careful. Yeah, I mean, movies are just ex- like I mean, money is the issue. Yeah. Whenever you decide that you're going to put a bunch of professionals in one space, right? But to if make you a have thing. decided that once you have, like, once that has been, I mean, like, within the context of making a movie, like, if you're going to make a movie and you have the money to make it, right? You can still like the pre- you're not limited by premise, really. But I also like, think like the technical limitations are still almost always money limitations. At least now, we were just having this conversation. Hmm. Uh, with Nathan. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's that's really the hard limiter. Like, Gone Home, I think, is a great game because it was made inside the box that they chose for it. But, like, if they could have, you know, like, they made it with... It, it was ended up being the budget, not the CPU power, obviously. I think that's... Yeah, I mean, I think that's... He was probably talking about that as well. Yeah. He's only talking about budget limitations. No, but I mean, he's talking about Mario. He says from Mario to Gone Home. Oh, technical and budget limitations. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think now it's like purely budget. I think it's worth pointing out that the first sentence of his last paragraph sounds like the first half of someone's prepared uh, 
award presenter speech where they come out on stage and say, I know, right. From Mario to Gone Home, <laughs> budget yep. limitations have shaped the conceit of the final game. I know. I have Tonight the exact we honor. Thing the <laughs> That's what I was thinking as I read it. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I think those are good. No, I, I generally think they are as well. Yeah. In games, it's weird because games, games are almost the opposite of movies in a lot of ways in, in that, like, the things that tend to be have been the most attractive and feasible to make games of have until recently not been particularly easy things to make movie out of movies out of and vice versa right where like yeah, traditionally okay. movies are like i remember you know reading um about the making of the original godfather and it was like the studio just wanted it to be set in the 70s because it was just cheaper and easier and coppola had to fight hard to get it made in the 50s which obviously required like period costumes period automobiles like just all this shit that made right. it more expensive without any just because he wanted to Whereas in a game, it's like it's so rare to have a game set in the modern era because it's right, kind of right. just easier just to be like, well, just make it sh- weird shit that's made up and no one's gonna like it's right. whatever. It's like in space. cost the same to make yeah. nineteen fifty nine whatever that yeah. it does to make yeah. a goblin. But if you make it in the modern era, you're you're also competing with people's well, own yeah, right. even, even when you said it the, how things look. Even so. when you said it in the past of real life, like you, I think you were just saying, you can stylize it. You can say it's set in. 1910. Yeah. Make sure everything basically has weird Edwardian scrolls all over all the architecture, and then people yeah. will think, oh, it's old. Yeah. God, you know what? Actually, I have a weird line to make here, and I apologize if this ends up being too tortured a comparison, but I saw. Um, Llewellyn Davis. Inside Llewellyn Davis yeah. this week, yeah. And that movie is set in 1961 in basically, in mainly Greenwich <clears throat> Village. It's set in a few other places, but mainly the village in New York. And uh, it's about the folk music scene, like basically in the, like, essentially in the weeks before the sort of explosion of Dylan onto the scene, which like changed everything. Obviously Dylan was this like towering figure, but this was about what that scene was like before his arrival mainly. And uh, there was a, there's a scene in that movie where like a few of the principal characters, like the principal character and another guy also record um, this like novelty song called please Mr. Kennedy. And it's like, a totally insane premise. It's like, please, Mr. Kennedy, don't send me into outer space. And it's like this goofy novelty song and it's hilarious. And the, uh, it's, it's really well done. Like it's really, really, it sounds like a late fifties, early sixties novelty song. You know, the kind that like that um, thing you do did that well as well. mm, yeah, Yeah, it did. It did. It did. That was good. Um, and, uh, but like the main character, uh, Lewin Davis played by, uh, uh, Chris Isaac, like finds it to be just bullshit. Like to him, it's tr- it's like trivial nonsense. Like he doesn't really un- like he thinks it's just dumb and a waste of a waste of you know artistic effort. Um, and I was re- and but it's like the scene is hilarious. Like it's, well, the scene where they're recorded is amazing and like pitch perfect and really funny and like the song is really well constructed uh, for for what it's trying to be. And I was I was reading a uh, I think it's Oscar Isaac, not Chris. Isaac. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, God, Chris Isaac. I was like, actually, Chris Isaac is in this no, movie, yeah. right. I and I haven't was, seen it yet. I knew it was wrong as I said it, and then as soon as I said it, I forgot to correct yeah. myself. Um, no, it's it's you're right. It's Oscar Isaac, uh, who does an amazing job. I had never seen him in anything before. I don't think. And um, he plays all the his own music in it, which is fantastic. Cool. Uh, anyway, I was reading an interview with uh, with Oscar Isaac and um, like. Uh, um, T-Bone Burnett, who supervised all the music in the film, and uh, I think the Cullens were in this interview as well, and uh, Justin Timberlake, who was also in that scene, might have might have, might have also been it. But anyway, the thing they were all talking about was like this this uh, song from the perspective of the character Lewin Davis is bullshit, but like as the filmmakers. They had to make it as good as they possibly can, and like the thing because it has to pass, pass muster. As exactly, like the an thing actual T- artifact. Right, the thing T Bone Burnett was saying was like you can make something really good, and then in the movie tell people it's bad, and they'll believe you that it's bad. Like right. if you if you fictionally contextualize it as a bad thing, people will buy it and they'll be like, "Ha, that stupid song! It was so dumb." But if you make a thing that's actually bad and you put it in, it just breaks immediately. It doesn't. It's not going to work at all. And that is something that I think. Uh, it, I, I've, I've, that interview I thought was really excellent. I thought that was a really astute observation. And like, obviously that's why this movie was one of the reasons anyway, the movie's good, um, is stuff like that. That's, that's, oh, go ahead. Finish your thought. No, no. Oh, I just, that's, <clears throat> that is such a good encapsulation of why stuff that tries to be like 
oh, it's like a fucking 80s movie, but it's right. just, they're yes. like, oh, it's fucking, fucking bad. So we'll fucking Blood Dragon. Sh- yeah. Blood Dragon. It's fucking actually, Blood Dragon. It's yeah, actually the first thing I thought it was Blood Dragon. Yeah. Ooh. We're calling it the out. The first thing I thought, Ugh. yeah, no, you're totally right about that. And I, the first thing I thought it was actually Grand Theft Auto. Which is like every store name and everything in yep. that game is like, ha, it's like consumeristic you have and to just, shitty. You have to remember like, when making what? that stuff that the people who make the actual ones in real life think they are making the best thing they exactly. can. And often have a lot yep. of money and time put into yep. making that. And it turns out bad, but that's like – that's why the best versions of those things are the things that are made with love as exactly. well as with scorn. Right. I, I find – like it's a thing that I think games are – pretty bad at generally and i think well, it's, it's hard it's, i know it's fucking it hard. very smart people <laughs> absolutely yeah. but i'm just saying i think it's actually related to the thing about setting and premise yeah. where it's like once you want to make something set in our world or in our era or even in a recent one that people who are especially people who are alive are actually close to or, or, or a few degrees away from like you're biting you're biting that off like you're you're choosing to go up against people's own memories and people's own cultural understanding. And, uh, that's a big deal. And like, I feel like it should, you know, that should try to hold yourself accountable to it if you're making that thing. And in, in movies, I guess just because they've had decades of having to deal with that problem, um, there are people whose entire job, like as production designer is just being really fucking good at that. Um, and that's the thing that I don't really feel like, we have in game like there's not a, a just a shared appreciation for that craft I think so much on game, in game development there's often um, a uh, feeling when you play games that people go most of the way there then hope that having like a wry smile about it will get you the rest of the way instead yeah. of just actually diving in until yeah. you die like artifacts you find in games like physical artifacts that you pick up and look at and read are often like just there's like there's just a few degrees away from actually really feeling like something that would legitimately truly and honestly exist in the world they're supposed to i feel like that's often a missed opportunity i think this is probably why it's what it's one of the reasons that the coen brothers are incredibly successful i mean it's one facet of mm-hmm. it but like those guys whatever the world is whether it's a specific point in history or a really weird imagined take on a genre or whatever they don't they don't shy away from going in as like legitimately as they possibly can with their world design. Like whether it's an adaptation of True Grit or a Cormac McCarthy thing, they take it at a hundred percent face value, like one hundred and fifty million percent face value, and that's why I think Burn, after reading, never actually has worked for me because that mm. movie is deliberately a step back from being yeah. genuine about everything. I don't right. know. They have, they have a few movies I think that that are a little too distant. Yeah. Like I, I, one of the things I appreciate about their more recent work is I, they've always gone back and forth a little bit with that, you know, but I think in the last several years, they've kind of settled into, I think, a nice groove of being pretty sincere, like being at least for the Coen brothers who are never going to be fully sincere. They have a very detached view of the world, I think, mm-hmm. that always comes across in their films, and that's just their worldview, and that's fine. But they're, they play down, I think, They've been playing down their kind of overt stylistic like wackiness a lot sure. in the last several years, and I think it's d- done them well because yeah. there are still moments in Lewin Davis that are like, okay, well, that's a Cullen Brothers scene, like clearly, like just mm-hmm. full on Cullen, but it's like used sparingly, you know, and it's deployed well. But the movie as a whole feels like it. There's a lot of reverence for what these characters are about, you know, like mm-hmm. what they want to achieve. Um, anyway, that's like. Way off the top. I've just been thinking about that movie a lot since I saw it. It was really good. And that thing in particular really stuck with me because it's it's something that, with respect to premise and setting, I think games could could learn a lot from. Is that enough gifts? Yeah. I don't know. Why not? Well, that about does it for this holiday episode of Idle Thumbs. <laughs> can't make the sound of the jingle bells if we're going to put the real ones in. Oh. Oh, we're doing that? Okay, that's fine. Yeah, you're hearing them right now. Simply <laughs> having no. a no, wonderful no, 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 no. Christmas time. See you next week, which is a New Year's Day episode. Bye. New Year's. Bye. Bye. What did you guys ask for from Santa for Christmas? Video games. Anything, any video game in particular? Oh, I meant Jake. Oh, that's really cute. Yeah. Jake, like, with a little bow on his head underneath your tree. Sure. Laying seductively. <laughs>
in like reindeer boxer shorts. You're nailing it. Huh. And then you look again, you're like, it's actually just Jay Allard. <laughs> <laughs> Just what I've always asked for. What I asked for was J Video Games Allard. The Mirage is l- somehow less exotic than the actual thing, which yeah. is Jay, Jay Allard lying supine under a right. Christmas tree. I was hallucinating when I saw Jake. What it actually is is Jay Allard. <laughs> the other bald white guy who I dream about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping for socks. You're go- I'm hoping for some socks. Like an Amazon I'm hoping, gift card. I'm hoping for a, uh, a sweatshirt that doesn't have a hood on it. Um, <laughs> I'm some changing my look. Yeah. I'm seriously fucking over the hoodie. Yeah. Big time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're wearing one right now. That's all I have. <laughs> seriously. I have mean? three, I have three hoodies and ten, no other clothing, 10 t-shirts, um, two shirts with collars on them. You realized at one point that you just a suit jacket. Had like and three 10 t shirts and three Mark Zuckerberg costumes. Yeah, I <laughs> seriously, like, my fucking out, my, my wardrobe is. 2014 is the year of the new look. I want mm. everybody to know that now. All right. For you or for everyone? Me. For really. most people, it's still the year of Luigi. I mean, they'll be saying, yeah. Or it's the year of the horse in Dota 2, apparently. And maybe in. Is uh, it? Oh, yeah. Look at that year. <laughs> you didn't, you didn't even go to Dota2.com today? No, is it the year of the horse? Like a heroin? <laughs> yes. It's Dota 2 the year of horse. <laughs> like heroin. I'm not getting into heroin in 2014. Why not? Be part of the next Dota I 2 event. I can't afford it. We can maybe sa- we can save the year of the horse for the yeah, New Year's yeah, episode. Yeah, I feel like that'd be a big reveal. It's a New Year's episode. Okay. Well, they're not I'll, telling I'll, what it is. I'll know about it by then. Okay. Um... No, so seriously, Chris. Mm-hmm. What do you? What do you? What, what do you expect from? What do you? What are you asking from the bit from the big guy? God, <laughs> I mean Santa. <laughs> I don't know, man. Whatever what if I bought you a video game on Steam? You have them all, though. Yeah, I really need more video games. Okay. What if I got you that guy outside yelling? I like that. We've already got that too. Chris has everything. We should do this podcast. <laughs> yeah, let's go.